Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. As always, as we start the service, we invite Sister Marcella to come. Amen. And pray for the Lord's blessing tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this evening, O oh God. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here safely, O oh God. We want to thank you, eternal Father, Lord, for your love towards us, God. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your protection, O oh God. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us, O oh God. Hallelujah. We want to say thank. We love you. We appreciate you, O oh God. For if it was not for you, Father, on our side, Side, Father God, we wouldn't be here, oh Lord. We want to thank you for shedding your blood for us, oh God. Father God, and as we are gathered here tonight, God, I pray so that you can visit us in your mercy. Touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our lips, our oh God. Hallelujah. Help us to focus on you tonight, oh God. Help us to forget about ourselves and worship you and praise you, oh God. For you deserve all of the praises, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, we desire more of you, O God. Come, Lord Jesus, and touch us, O God. Let there be a revival, O God, in our souls, my God. Oh, Jesus, help us to draw closer to you, O God. Lord, and as we choose to live for you, I pray so that nothing may not separate us from you, O God. Help us to be rooted and grounded in you, Father God. Father Father, take over the service, Lord. Take over, Brother Christopher, mighty God. Use him mightily, O oh God. Touch Brother Lake, mighty God. Use him mightily, O oh God, to minister your word to us, mighty God. Not only to us in this place, but those that are listening, Father God. I pray so that they, oh God, hallelujah, your words can touch them, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, those that are not saved, O oh God, Lord, that will help your words tonight I pray oh God in the name of Jesus so that your word can go like a fire oh God hallelujah like a sword oh God and pierce their hearts mighty God hallelujah and I pray so that they can choose to live for you father God oh Jesus we pray for faith tonight oh God Lord your touch from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet in the name of Jesus you are the healer oh God we believe and we trust in you my God take away the pain oh God every cup father in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 in the name of Jesus total healing mighty God we pray for total healing for you are the healer father God we give you glory we give you praise we give you honor let your perfect will be done in Jesus name amen Jesus going to prepare mansion for me far far away away over the sea there will be no sorrow there will be no pain Jesus going to prepare for me Jesus going to prepare a mansion for me far far away away over the sea there will be no sorrow there will be no pain Jesus going to prepare a mansion for me oh, Jesus going to prepare a mansion for me far far away away over the sea There will be no pain. Jesus going to prepare a mansion for me. To my father's house, to my father's house, come and go with me. To my father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. 
Oh, come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. Oh, there is peace and love in my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house. There is peace and love in my Father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. Oh, Jesus is the way to my Father's house, to my Father's house, to my Father's house. Jesus is the way to my Father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. Open up, right up, that's all I know. That's all I know, I'm going up to that city where mansions are prepared for me. I'm going up, right up, that's all I know, I'm going up. That's all I know, I'm going up to that city where mansions are prepared for me. I'm going up to that city where mansions are prepared for me. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way. Praise God. He said in the Gospel of St. John that anybody who tries any other way is a thief. Amen. Hallelujah. The only way to the Father is by Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We just want to bring some requests, prayer requests before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to continue to pray for our pastors over in Cuba that are hospitalized. Amen. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord. Touch them, oh God. Touch them in their body, my God. Touch them in their body. Lord, by your stripes we were healed. Lord, you have borne every sickness, every disease. Oh God, oh God, bring healing, Lord, that the health may spread, may, may spring forth speedily, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the Richie's grandson, Carson. Lord Jesus, we pray healing for Carson, my God. In Jesus' name, your touch, your mercy, your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch him in his body, my God. Touch him in that limb that is fractured, oh God. Lord, bring healing speedily to him, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just lift up Brother Charles also. Lord Jesus, we pray for Brother Charles. We pray your mercy and grace upon Brother Charles, oh God. Lord, he needs a touch, Lord. Your word says, it's not by might, it's not by power, Lord. Hallelujah. Not by the wisdom of men, oh God, but by your grace, by your mercy, and by your power, Lord, that healing virtue may enter into his body, my God, that you will make him whole from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. At this time, I even want to pray for myself. I need a touch in my body. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you are the God of power. You are the God that healeth, oh my God. 
Hallelujah. My God, my God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bring every affliction that is upon my body before you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch me at this time, Lord. Bring healing to my body, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, Christopher. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Christopher, just lead us in another song. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In moments like these, I'll sing out a song. I'll sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Worship and adore you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Praise and honor to your glorious name. Hallelujah. Praise and honor to your holy name. We love you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for all your benefits, your goodness, Lord, your great salvation. Hallelujah. Your salvation truly is great, oh my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The book of Romans, chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans, chapter 8. Amen. And I want to read, for now, for the time being, just one verse in Romans chapter 8. And uh, verse number 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And this is the part I want to come to. That's what our study is tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not um, a, a word tonight for um, exhortation or correction or instruction in righteousness. Amen. The Bible says that the word of God is profitable, first of all, for doctrine. Amen. And I want to, tonight, hallelujah, to go into one of the most important doctrines in the Bible. 
that is stated right here in that verse. And to talk about the Holy Ghost, amen. The Holy Spirit as a witness, amen. Because that verse ends by saying, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none. Amen. Hallelujah. What you say, he does not, if a man does not have the Spirit of Christ, um, this same chapter goes on to say that if the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ shall quicken your mortal bodies. But here in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 9, it says that if you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't belong to Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Lord, bless the ministry of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, in the Bible, there are certain things, there are no gray areas. There are some things that it depends on your conscience. Amen? Hallelujah. The book of Romans talk about one man esteemeth one day above another, another man esteemeth every day alike. Hallelujah. Well, that's up to that person. Amen. Hallelujah. And God accepts both of them. He that regardeth the day and he that regardeth not the day. And he says we should not judge one another concerning this. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One man eats flesh. He eats meat. And another man eats only herbs. And, and uh, hallelujah. He, he says, you know, that is up to your personal conscience. Hallelujah. These are gray areas. Hallelujah. That neither is wrong and neither is right. Amen. Hallelujah. But there, is, there, are, there are things that are absolutes in the Bible. Amen. There, there, there is a broad way that leadeth to destruction. And many people are on that highway to destruction. And it says that there is a narrow way. Hallelujah, that leads to life eternal. And few there be that find it. It's not, a, it's not a gray area. It's not a gray area. Hallelujah. Jesus said that he is the door. And that's an absolute. He said anyone who tries to enter any other way but through the door, amen, is a thief. He's not going to make it in. And here we come to this verse that talks about the spirit of Christ. And if you don't have the spirit of Christ, he says, you don't belong to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When does someone receive the Holy Spirit? When, when does it indwell somebody? The scripture gives us um, some examples of when. In the book of Ephesians, Chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Let me read those two verses. Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. What happened? You trusted. What happened? What, what's the next? You heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. So it says three things. You, you what? You trusted. You heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believe. So Ephesians chapter 1. Goes on to say in verse number 13. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When did it? happened you had to trust you had to amen hallelujah praise the lord you had to have heard the word of truth and and you had to believe praise god and it, it goes on to say which is the earnest the spirit the spirit of god is the earnest of 
our inheritance. Uh, the word earnest is not a word that is in common use. But let me tell you, I, um, I've gone to, to courts and they had promotions and all I paid at the time was one cent as a down payment. One cent. Hallelujah. That's all. And I was able to, to get something delivered to my home co costing several thousand dollars. What was that? That was a down payment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's not the, that's not the full payment, but that's just a down payment. And you know what? When you receive the Holy Ghost, it, that's what it is. It's a down payment. Hallelujah. Of what, um, you know, when you read the Old Testament, the Spirit of God moved upon people. Hallelujah. Even Saul, King Saul, when he was pursuing David and his intention was to kill David, hallelujah, the Bible tells me that the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied the whole night, lying before the Lord prophesying. And, and there are many places in the Old Testament where we read of the Spirit of God coming on people. In fact, Peter Peter speaking in general of concerning the Old Testament prophets. He said, holy men speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want you to realize something. In the gospel, we are told that Jesus received the Spirit without measure. In, in, in everybody else's case, in the Old Testament, the... Uh, um, you know, when, when I go to the New Testament, even before the book of Acts, Christopher, I read of Anna, the prophetess, who departed not from the temple. The Spirit of God moved upon her. Simeon, who took the baby Jesus and prophesied, the Spirit of God moved upon him. John the Baptist, even from his mother's womb, the Spirit of God was upon him. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, it's different with believers. It's different in the age that we are living in. Hallelujah. Because now what we get is a down payment. Hallelujah. It says it's the earnest of our inheritance. It, it means that God means business. That he is going to, hallelujah, put the full thing in our life. You, 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 you remember when, um, I want to give you an example, uh, when Judah went out with his friend and, and he saw the, the harlot, or who he thought was the harlot. You'll remember that in the book of Genesis? And, and what he said, the payment was going to be some animals. But what he did? He gave his staff. Hallelujah. That wasn't that, that was just an earnest. That was to let, to let the harlot know that he meant business. Praise God. Hallelujah. But, but in, in, let's get back to the more positive. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the spirit, what you have to do, you have to trust, you have to hear, you have to believe. Praise God. Now, let me just jump and tell you, what, what is one of the important things? You have to hear. Can I say that? You have to hear. Praise the Lord. Christopher, there are people in, in congregations around the world that have never heard. What have they never heard? The, what is recorded in the book of Acts. Chapter 19, beginning at verse number 1. That while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the earth of course, came into Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And, and what was missing? We have not so much as heard. They, they had not, amen. What Ephesians 1 and verse number 13 tells us, it tells us, amen, after that ye heard, praise the Lord, after that, that's why we come and we, when we are preaching, we tell people, 
you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't want to mention names of congregations and, and different flocks and organizations and denominations, but there are some places where this is never taught. That the people in these congregations never hear about the Holy Ghost. Or in fact, they, they hear it, but they don't hear it preached right. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. So, it says, which is the earnest of our inheritance. God is showing that he means business and he places just a token. Amen. A small portion of his Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. And it says, until the redemption of the purchase possession unto the praise of his glory. But I want to go back and it says, um, ye were sealed. And you know, most people when you think of seal, you think of, um, you know, closing something tight. You, you seal it up. Amen, amen. But the seal here is not that kind of seal. It's not to close up something tight, but it's what you do with a legal document. You put a seal on it. Hallelujah. If you go to the registry of civil status and you want a certificate, a birth certificate, hallelujah, a marriage certificate from the civil status registry, they are going to put a seal. That red thing that you see on it is a seal. Back in, in, in the times of the Bible and for many centuries, the seal was usually what? The wax was melted, hallelujah, and, and the melted wax was poured on the document. And then while it was still uh, soft, while it was still hot, they would take something with an imprint, with a stamp on it, and stamp it. And it's sealed, hallelujah. It's a legal thing that is done. The seal indicates that you belong. To Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a down payment. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 21. What are we talking about? We are talking about the Holy Ghost. Our first verse that we read in the book of Romans Chapter 8 and verse number 9, the, the last sentence in that verse says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. He doesn't belong to Jesus. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and have anointed us, who's anointed us? Is God. Who have also sealed us and given us the and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts praise the name of the lord amen 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 it talks about an anointing it talks about being sealed and it talks about the earnest of our inheritance all of these Refer to the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I made reference to Acts chapter 19. The, those people were believers in Acts chapter 19. They, they believed. But you know what? They had not yet received the Holy Ghost. What had to happen? They had to hear. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. John 7 verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, 
saying, if any man thirst, hallelujah, let me tell you, you can go many days without food, but you can't go very long without water. Praise the Lord. You, you can fast for 21 days, hallelujah, but you uh, and not eat any solid substance, but your body needs water. Let me just tell you something about water. Um, the, the world powers, the richest nations of this world, are spending billions of, do uh, of dollars sending spacecrafts out there. And, and you know one of the things? They are looking to see if they can get a planet that has water. Somewhere out there, if there is a planet that has water, it means that the possibility, there is a strong possibility that there's going to be life on that planet. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. And, and, and let me digress a little bit. It's amazing, Christopher, if they find a single cell organism, if they find an amoeba, uh, hallelujah, what else? A protozoa. Those very simple cells that I um, learned in my little time that I did biology at school. I hated the topic, by the way. Amen. I dropped it as soon as I could. Hallelujah. What's that? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe your mother would not be happy. You're correct, but I, I, I hated the stuff. But I, I sat in class long enough to know about simple um, organisms, protozoa, as I said, an amoeba. And Christopher, if they found an amoeba out there on Mars, they would rejoice that they, that they have found life. And a baby in a mother's womb with a beating heart, a baby like John the Baptist, who in the mother's womb, when they hear voices, can leap, and the people on the left say that's a woman's body and she can do what with it, she can, what they, what they, they say about it, don't try to use the word kill. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I said I, I was digressing a little bit, let me get back online. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, if you happen to listen to me talking tonight and there is conviction in your heart concerning abortion, there is mercy with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Pastor, I, I had an abortion and I feel the guilt of it. I, I have dreams of that baby crying. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you can make things right. Because he's a merciful God. Hallelujah. You can come to God in repentance. You can take on water baptism. As, as um, Paul was told by Ananias. Saul, right are as thou. Arise and be baptized. And, and, and do what? And wash away your sins. And wash away your sins. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Therapy is good sometimes, but sometimes what you need is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. Could I have an amen tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible tells me there in the book of John, chapter 7 and verse 37, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me, and drink. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He went to Samaria and he met the woman by the well and he offered her water. And she thought it was in the well because she claimed that he didn't have anything to draw the water with. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But he was speaking of something else. He was speaking of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells me in the, ne in the next verse, he that believeth 
on me. As the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. What's going to happen? He says, he that believeth on me. This is for every single person who believeth. Remember what we read in where we, where we started in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 14. You need to trust, you need to hear, and you need to believe. And when you become a believer, when you become a believer, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, what's that all about? Hallelujah. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Amen, amen. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost in, is important in everybody's life. The Holy Ghost is the most important thing you need to get right now. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. It's, it's, it, it, you can't leave earth without it, says the bumper sticker. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. When the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ, amen, in Christ, rise first. Remember what we read in Romans 8 and verse 9. If you don't have the spirit, you're none of his. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You know, um, there are people who tell you, once you believe, you have the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you, we have to take the full counsel of Almighty God. The book of Ephesians that we read says it's when you, when you um, trust, when you hear, and when you believe. But um, it doesn't happen automatically every time. Acts chapter 8, if you will turn with me in Acts chapter 8, um, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Jesus. Amen. And the people with one accord gave heed to the preaching. And you know what happened? Hallelujah. They surrendered to Jesus. They repented of their sins. Amen. The Bible tells me in, in, in Acts chapter 8, I can't put my finger on the exact verse, but um, when they heard him preach, they believed. Amen. When they believed, what happened? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, um, you know, for some people, it ends there. So they say, you saved. You know, you know it's amazing, Christopher. I, I don't hear it so much. I don't know if it's still being done. But you have a big crusade, uh, uh, revival services. You invite a dynamic preacher to come and preach. Hallelujah. Amen. A hireling that he won't come if you don't get $60,000 for him. Anybody who states that is a hireling. Hallelujah. You hear me? Anybody who lays down, I will not come if I don't get so much money, is a hireling. Praise the Lord. But you, 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 you have this dynamic and charismatic preacher. And uh, let me tell you, it doesn't matter who preach. I, amen. If the devil, devil preached the gospel, people are going to want to get saved. Hallelujah. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. It doesn't matter whoever preaches it. It doesn't change the word of God. But here in the crusade, uh, you have people coming forward because you know what? They heard the message. They heard Jesus is a savior and they want to be saved. And they stand up and, and the preacher say, okay, recite, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, and the people, Lord Jesus, I, I come to you and I come to you. I recognize that I am a sinner. And they say this and finish with an amen um, more words than what I just said, and they looked at they they will look at you and tell you you are saved. No, if any man have not the spirit, 
of Christ, he is none of his. Hallelujah. You need to have the spirit of God in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you can be casting out demons if you don't have the spirit of God. Do you need to have the indwelling spirit to cast out demons? No. Huh? Remember, there were some that the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, we saw some people who were casting out demons. Yet the disciples, um, in fact, the scripture that I just read in the book of John, John chapter 7, verse 39, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. But they were, hallelujah, they were casting out demons. They were healing the sick. Uh, you know, uh, 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 hallelujah, that's the power of the word of God. Yeah. Amen, amen. You, you know, there are, there are ungodly men who apply some of the principles of the word of God, like the principles of charity. And you know what happened? They see results. They see results. Amen, hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, I was um, in the book of Acts chapter 19. And here were these people. They had heard. They trusted. They believed. They were baptized. Amen. But Acts chapter 19, sorry, it's Acts chapter 18, verse number 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Why did they send Peter and John? Um, Philip was doing a great work. Hallelujah. In, in, in other words, um, all, all by himself, he was doing a tremendous work. So why did they send Peter and John? Who, when they were come down, prayed for them. That what? They might receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Remember all we said about them? That they believed there was great joy. I remember when I repented of my sins. I remember that day, that Friday afternoon, that I knelt before my bed and I, I prayed a prayer of repentance. It was the first time I had prayed that kind of prayer from the depth of my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I recognized my sinful condition. I, 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 I got up feeling different. Hallelujah. And, and in Acts chapter 8, the people in Samaria, when they went through, when they went through that, there was a difference. There was a lightness. Amen. And the Bible says that there was joy in the city. But you know what it says? Who when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet he was fallen upon none. Hallelujah. It was important for them to come. And I want you to notice what happened. Sometimes it takes the laying on of hands. That's why, that's why there is an altar call. That's why, hallelujah, when you're in a service, amen, and God is dealing with you, it's always good, hallelujah, at the altar call you come. Amen. Let, and let me just say, by the way, the altar is not just for a repentant sinner. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. 
And, and uh, let me continue here in Acts chapter 18, verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. They had been, uh, they had done everything, believed, even to the stage of being baptized. Hallelujah. Amen. Then laid they their hands on them. They laid their hands on them. Praise God. Up to that point in time, Christopher, hallelujah, they were believers, but they didn't belong to Jesus. You know, you know what the Bible calls the Holy Spirit? It calls it the spirit of adoption. Yes. Amen, amen. Let me see. Um, hallelujah. Romans 8 verse 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, um, the people in Samaria had not as yet received the spirit of adoption. They did not belong to Jesus as yet. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was fallen upon none of them, only they had been baptized in the name of Jesus. And, and this scripture that I read in the book of Romans, it says that when you receive, when you receive the spirit of adoption, amen, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Amen. It's twice. On two occasions, the Apostle Paul talks about receiving the spirit of adoption. In, in the book of, of um, Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Hallelujah. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his sons into your hearts. Crying, Abba, Father. And I was talking about the word Abba. The, the word Abba was not translated. Hallelujah. There are some cases in the Bible where the word was not translated. Abba is a Hebrew word. And uh, um, some Knowledgeable people says there is no equivalent word, Christopher Raleigh, in the English. The closest thing we can come to it is uh, the name by which you call your father. Some, I used to call my father Daddy. I, I know that the Nichols, calls, they call their father Pops. You've heard them? You've heard them? Uh, you know? And... Um, they are different names, affectionate names. But Abba goes beyond just a mere um, affectionate name. It also has respect in it, reverence, hallelujah. And the Bible says, you, you, you know, Abba is, is Hebrew, and the next word that was in the original is a Greek word for what we know nowadays, father. Um, what it shows, Abba, when you get the spirit of God, and people need to recognize that, that the word Abba is put there because is of intimacy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell you, amen, amen. 
somebody walking down the road could not look, have looked at my father and called him daddy. That was reserved for me. Amen. You'd have to say Mr. Lake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe if it was his friend, they would call him Russell. Or some would call him Pelage. Praise the Lord. But I could call him Daddy. Praise the Lord. And uh, Amen. When, when you get the spirit of adoption, a new level of intimacy comes into your life. Hallelujah. You now have a personal relationship with Almighty God. And because of that, Amen. Jude tells us that we can now build up ourselves upon our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you receive the Holy Ghost, your prayer enters a new dimension. There is a level of intimacy, hallelujah, between you and Almighty God. Hallelujah. Could somebody say praise the Lord? Amen, amen, amen. In the book of John chapter 14, it is called a comforter. Amen. One that is called along. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, we like to quote Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And what's going to happen? And you are going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Nobody is excluded. Nobody. Because the next verse says, For the promise is unto you and unto your children. Amen. And to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And let me tell you, God is truly calling you. Amen. When those people in Samaria, amen, when, Philip, when um, Peter and John came and laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells me, Simon the sorcerer offered them money. It says in the next verse, and when Simon the sorcerer saw, when he saw, when he saw, hallelujah. Let me tell you, it's not something that you come to the front and you say a sinner's prayer and they tell you that you have the Holy Ghost. Simon wouldn't offer any money for that. But when he saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands uh, that the Holy Ghost was given, amen, hallelujah, he offered them money. But let me tell you, you can't pay for it. Hallelujah. No money changes hands. Hallelujah. That somebody can receive the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. It's God's prerogative to give whoever. Uh, amen. And, and he says, if you will believe, if you will believe, hallelujah, you can receive it. And in Acts 2.39, he says, it is a promise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me tell you, if you're listening online, find an apostolic church. Hallelujah. Find a Jesus name church. Find a church where you can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And men of God can lay hands on you and you can receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, maybe you may have lived years, years in a congregation going every day that, the, that there is a gathering, praise the Lord, and yet still you don't have the Holy Spirit. But thank God you can experience it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to minister your word of God. Lord, I know that there is somebody out there, Lord. That's the reason why you gave me this topic, oh my God. Baptize that person. Let that person experience the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.